Welcome to Book World with Karen Rayborn. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hello everyone. Look at your life. Look at your choices. Choosing to watch this video is the best choice that you've ever made. In case you're new here, kindly consider subscribing to this channel. And for the returning subscribers, thank you so much for always coming back and appreciating my Continuing content. Continuing with the analysis of A Silent Song and Other Stories by Godwin Siundu. Here is the book. I've analyzed 10 stories and this is the 11th story. So kindly ensure that you watch all the episodes. Thank First, you. the 11th story is called The Neighborhood Watch by Remy Gamije, Rwanda and Namibia. Born and raised, born in Namibia and raised in Rwanda. So that is it. So first, let's look at the meaning of this title, The Neighborhood Watch. When you, when you hear a title, The Neighborhood Watch, what comes into your mind? From this book, we get to see that this is a group of people who come together, live together to commit crimes. They stand out in a particular neighborhood to protect it against um, theft and what have you. But at the end of it, they're the same people that commit it. They mark their territories in, so that they, no one can come and invade their privacy or rather come to their territory. So this is the neighborhood watch that we're going to talk about from this book. Then we have characters in the book. I'm going to talk about these few characters that we are introduced to in this book. As the story begins, we are introduced to Elias. The story begins as Elias roughly shakes everyone awake for breakfast. A chorus of yawns sprinkled with stretching. There's some grumbling. Then everyone starts folding their blankets and pieces of cardboard. A can of water is passed around. Everyone cups a handful and splashes their faces. Elias goes first, then Lazarus, then Silas, and then Omagana. There is little left when it reaches Martin, the newest and youngest member of the neighborhood, watch. So that is how the story intro is introduced. First, we are introduced to all the characters that are in this book, apart from one that we're going to talk about later. First, we have Elias. Elias is considered as the oldest in this crew, or rather this team. Being the oldest, he has a lot of memories. He talks about uh, witnessing uh, the South African insurgency, the war that happened during that time. He witnessed that, and this war tends to haunt him. And then we have... Lazarus. Lazarus that we are introduced to as the second person here. This is a man who is also known as a lieutenant. He's called this name because he's so, he's, he has some built up muscles and can protect this team. Whenever they go anywhere, this is the man that offers protection, that they are safe when they're with him. Then again, we are also introduced to Silas. This Silas is a, this person who likes taking risks. He's a man who likes taking risks and also known as a thief. He could go around doing a lot and the, uh, the team or the crew could warn him against doing that because he's risking being arrested or rather anything bad happening about it. But again, we get to see that even this, this Silas was once in prison, but he doesn't want to talk about it at all. Yeah, and we realize that in the book. So the next person that we are also introduced to in this book is Omagano, Omagano. This is a lady. He's serving. Uh, she's serving a very great purpose in this in this team because whenever they cannot be allowed access to to hunt for food, that is where she comes in and helps them out. Number one thing that we're going to see from this lady that we can talk about as a handful, she's ready to offer her body instead of a, a man or money so that they can get food to the guards. Uh, a story is told in this book that whenever they go to a place to look for food, remember these people are living on the street. According to the introduction of the story, you can realize that they were just lying somewhere with pieces of cardboard. So these are people that are living on the street. They have to wake up in the morning to go and look for food. And whenever they go to look for food, that is when we can see that there are a lot of challenges that they face. They are denied access to specific places and because of this Omagano has to come in and serve the purpose at that time. So that is it. There is Martin is the newest member of the crew. That one we are told and the youngest member. 
He's just in the neighborhood watch, but he's the newest. They're still trying to teach him about life. And that is what is going, it's happening. But Martin, these people are divided into two groups. We have the first group that co consists of uh, Elias, Lazarus, and Amagano. They walk around looking for food in order that they can get something to eat at the end of the day. Then we have the second team that involves Silas and Martin. They walk together. Remember I said that Silas is a thief. Then Martin is the newest member. Martin is trying to learn the ways of Silas as they walk together according to what we are told. He's trying to learn the tricks of this. Uh, away from the characters and all that, let me now talk about um, another person, uh, another thing that we can see. At the beginning, at the, at the beginning of the book, we can see that they, they also... These people trying to use water, pass it around. Uh, people washes their faces and pass it until the last person. This means that there's not enough for them. There's not enough for them on the street. They have to share the little that they have. And that is what you can see happening here. There's that act, act of sharing, the act of sharing. They're sharing all they have, but there's nothing. The can is empty. They put it away as the valuables. Yeah. So another thing that we're going to talk about, there's a character that I left out that we're going to talk about, but I can just mention her here. There's also old Mrs. Bezwenden Hout. This is a neighbor who lives in a wealthy, uh, a wealthy community or a wealthy neighborhood um, of Eros. This woman comes handy and helps these people with a lot during their time of searching for food. On weekends, they could go to this woman's place or rather when the woman would see them walking through the gate, she would stop them, come, bring them canned food, bring them scissors to shave, bring them books to read, rosary to hold their prayers with, and clothes and water view. So this man has this woman has been of great help to these individuals living on the street. And at some point we see them wondering, what if this woman dies today. How are we going to survive? Who is going to give us this food every Sunday on weekends? Who is going to do this for us? So there's also that in the story. So uh, that is what happens. And those are the characters that we get to see in the book. So let me talk about um, the street life that they, they are living. The street life, they get to talk about their challenges in the street. And at first I've mentioned some lack of a whatever they need and they have to go look for it and then also there is also the difference in class that exists in this place in street life they are able to recognize and identify people who are wealthy they are able to identify the neighborhoods that uh, people who live there are so poor and at some point they talk about this street life and say that at certain neighborhood when you go there Whatever happens, that you're not going to get anything valuable, anything like food to eat. They barely have enough. How are they going to throw something when they don't have? So whatever you will meet is just some, some bad things inside the beans. And they're not even organized. The, the people that are living on these poor suburbs are not even organized. That is what they talk about in this story and i'm going to read some uh, something here that will help us understand what i'm talking about they're talking about a traumatic story when they visited a neighborhood rich for some newspaper i see so we can start a fire that night they are wrapped around something and i lift it up when i open it i scream and run dead baby is evil lazarus says omagano wraps her arms underneath her breast and rocks herself a little. Whatever they get inside the, those bins I've just skipped is a, inside that bin in this neighborhood was just a dead baby that they consider is so evil. That is what they get in that neighborhood. Again, whatever we get to see, there are also some neighborhood that consists of people who are wealthy. They know how to organize everything. When, you, when they have the bin, they will uh, organize and say the blue bin is for foodstuff. The black bean is for certain things. The yellow bean is for certain things or rather the equipment or instruments that are used. So these people are organized. I can say that uh, the author 
Remingham BJ, the author of this book, is trying to bring something into our attention. How waste are supposed to be to be disposed in certain areas that people who live there are that community that they are not well off. They tend to be careless with everything, how they throw anything away. Think of people who are wealthy and that can be noticed by the way they arrange everything. When they're throwing the old kettles, the old um, fridge, the old what have you, they dispose it in a certain way and then foodstuffs, they dispose it in a certain way and we are even told that they even go ahead to wash them before, before disposing them. They, so there's the aspect of waste disposal that is coming out so loud in this book that Ngamija is trying to talk about in this book. How it's supposed to dispose waste? Are you supposed to just mix everything up and throw them? Or are you supposed to divide and separate every everything to its own place? Yeah. The thematic concerns in this book, there is crime, the aspect of crime and violence. This crime and violence is seen when we get to see that these individuals, or rather the neighborhood watch, they go to a certain pub or a certain restaurant and then a man is killed there. This man is killed, Amos. The death of Amos after nice tap shows violence. That we can read from page 80 and 81. Then there were three things Amos could not hold. His tongue, his drink, and his guts. The knife flashed quickly, in, out, in, out, and then slashed across. Amos looked at his bloody hands and tottered on the spot. Before the fall comes, Amos fell. Everyone ran. So get to see Amos being stabbed, and then Amos dies. They also talk about Silas that I've mentioned at the beginning when I was talking about character. Silas engages in a crime. He could dare steal from people. He could dare follow people around. That is another thing that we can talk about, crime and violence. There's also Lazarus who is considered as a lieutenant because he could fight people. He could protect this team by fighting for them. There's also the neighborhood watch. They have to hide their valuables. They believe that if they leave them just openly, people are going to come and steal them. So there's also the aspect of having to hide all their valuables in order to protect them away from the thieves. Yeah. And then there's also the secret struggles. People are struggling with secrets. They hide their valuables. They mark their territories. We are told that at the place that they used to sleep, there was... It was written N-W. It was marking the territories that no one could come and invade their territory. And again, there is also the aspect of camouflaging to look like ordinary people. That one we can see in page 76. When they are walking around the streets, they're so, they're so careful on how people are going to see them. They, they want to look so nice. They want to cover up everything that when they're walking on the street, people will not judge them for the street persons or the street people living on the street, but people will just treat them as the normal people. So they ensure that they don't smell. They talk about the aspect of smelling. On any given day, they have multitude of things to worry about and shame is one of the first things a person learns to shed on the street. But smelling bad, is something they try to avoid as much as possible. People's eyes can accept a man in tattered brown and dirty clothing, even in a store or a church. But a smelly man is despised everywhere. So they get to say that they, they, they have to camouflage themselves. They have to look like normal people. They have to look so clean in order to walk on the streets so that no one is going to judge them. Yeah. And then there's also the struggle to get food. I talked about it at the beginning, how they rely on waste foods and leftovers from the restaurants, from the bins that are, are thrown all around. Yeah, that is what they rely on. And again, Umagano has to satisfy guards sexually in order to gain access to some of the bins that were in the restricted areas. Then also we have Mrs. Bezuiden Bezu Bouts, who, give them, who gives them canned food every week another thing that is standing out is the poor health condition 
From the beginning of the story, we are told that Elias is complaining about pain, coughing, having to cough. Elias has a cracking cough. He pulls the mucus through the back of his mouth and acts a dollop away when it lands with a plop. The cough becomes worse each day. Sometimes there is blood in the gunk from his chest, but he waves everyone's concern away. Blood is part of life. Blood is a part of death. He does not argue with his biology. His gray hair is unevenly cut, but not so much that it draws attention. So, there's that poor health condition, and there's nothing that they can do about it. There's also the aspect of class and difference. I've talked about the, uh, the city or the suburbs where people, the neighborhood where people who live there are so wealthy. In Windhoek City, it has been split into different neighborhoods to make class difference. The desperation, they have to survive. They can do anything to survive. You can satisfy someone sexually in order to survive. You can do the through theft, you have to steal to survive. So this desperation, in order to get that food, there are a lot that they're undergoing in this neighborhood watch. So until then, that is our video. In case you have a question, kindly let me know in the comment section. We've analyzed the 11th episode, the 11th story, The Neighborhood Watch, by Remy Ngamije. Remy Ngamije is trying to um, enjoy the, a lot of themes in this book, a lot of things that happen in the society that people don't talk about them. He comes to terms with it, he comes to understand it, the street life, and comes to talk about it by naming them The Neighborhood Watch. What are these neighborhood watch supposed to be doing? They're supposed to be protecting people. Why are these people living on the street? Why is it that they, it is so hard to survive? I hope you have enjoyed this analysis. Kindly like this video, comment, share, and let's meet in the next video. Bye.